As promised, we're going to do some examples. Uh, here's one. 10x squared plus 43x plus 28. Now, not a super difficult problem to do as long as you follow the rules. The first rule is to see if you can pull out any common factors. Well, 43 is a prime, so not looking good. 2 and 5, which go into 10, no. Uh, your first step, by the way, is to see if 10 goes into all of them, and it doesn't. So that's pretty much out. Common factors are done. Let's move on. So the next step would be slide. So I'm going to circle this 10 and slide it all the way over to this 28. This thing's going to look like a beast, but it's not that hard. Bring down this. Bring down this. 280. Now, let's look at the signs to set up the problem. The second sign, in this case, is a plus, so that means both the signs are going to be the same. The first sign is also plus, so my answer is going to be in the form of x plus something and x plus something else. Now, that slide, and we've already picked the signs, uh, so we're factoring right now. Now we're going to have to do, we looked at both the signs, factor tree, so a factor tree for 280, it's ridiculous. 1 and 280, 2 and 140. Now thinking ahead, these are both the same signs, which means I'm going to add factors to get to 43. So I'm going to start in my head mentally thinking, can I add up to 43? Well, these don't, so I have to keep going. So I'm going to do 280 divided by 3. See, I did it in the calculator. It gave me that nasty fraction there. Well, it's decimal, but I mean it's a fraction really because it's a repeating decimal. Uh, so that's not going to work. 70 plus 4 is 74, so that's not it. We're getting closer. 6 doesn't work. We're getting right in the zone of doing it. Now mentally I know I have to add, so I'm going to check 35 plus 8, and look, it gives me 43. It's what it's supposed to be when I add them together. So these are my two factors. It doesn't matter what order you put them in, by the way. And the last step, since I slide, and then I factored, now I have to divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by 10. See? Uh, this is what it would look like, but I need to reduce these fractions down into improper fraction form. So this becomes 8 is 4 over 5. The calculator, by the way, is going to be super tempted to give you a mixed number here. Do not allow it. If you have a fraction calculator, that is. Now, as you can see, these don't reduce down to whole numbers. So I'm going to have to just adjust and bump slide this 5x back over here. So 5x plus 4. Because to get rid of divide by 5, I have to multiply. So I have to multiply this by 5 too. That shows the uh, times. Uh, just slide the 2x over. And that's it. It's kind of long, but it's not difficult. Let's do another one. Assuming I can find it. Wouldn't that be nice? hit it for myself. Uh, so this one I'm going to try to go a little bit faster. The first step of course is to factor out any common factors and these absolutely have common factors. Uh, one of the biggest glaring common factors is 4. So I'm going to pull out a 4. Now from here I think I'm as far down as I'm going to go because that 11 is kind of a daunting. So I need to, uh, I'm just going to put this 4 over here for a while and then come back to it later. Now I'm going to look at this 10x, uh, uh, 10x squared minus 11x minus 6. Can't have this. I'm going to slide it. So it becomes x squared minus 11x minus 60. Now I'm going to start, I did the slides, time to factor. I'm going to look at that second sign. That second sign's minus. So the signs are going to be different. I don't have to worry about anything else. So I can pre-set up the fact that this is going to be x plus something and x minus something. I should also say, when the signs are different, after I make my factor list, I'm going to try to find two factors that when I subtract them, 
they give me 11x. The reason that I want to do that, by the way, is if I was doing the polynomials forward, like I was doing x times x is x squared, if this is minus and this is plus, when I combine like terms later, so say this was uh, negative 14 and this was um, 3 or whatever, that would give me negative 14x plus 3, which would leave me to negative 11. Obviously, those aren't factors of 60, but I'm just giving you the gist of why it works that way. So let's make a factor list for 60. 1 and 60, of course. 2 and 30. Uh, 3 and 20. Now, I'm thinking in my head already. These are different. Can I subtract and get 11? Not yet. 4 and 15. Oh, wait a minute. 15 minus 4 does give me the 11 I'm looking for. So this is going to be my factor set that I'm going to use. Now, I have to be smart. This is negative 11x. So since this is negative, the bigger number goes behind the minus. Because like I said, I want to do negative 15 plus 4, and that will give me the negative 11 I want. So this looks like this. I'm almost done. Then I have done slide. I've done factor. I need to go back and divide. So I'm going to divide both by the 10. Like I said, leave this 4 till the very end. It'll come back to haunt us, but not so much as it's going to cause a huge problem. Divide by 10, divide by 10. Uh, this reduced becomes 2 fifths. This reduced becomes 3 over 2. Looks crazy, right? See how this can happen? I've got to slide this over. Slide that over. Maybe one day it'll work out, who knows. Now, the only thing we have to remember is this whole thing was multiplied by 4, so I just pop that 4 right back out in front. That's the answer. Not a big deal. I'm going to do one more, hopefully somewhat quickly, and then that'll be it. Here's another one. This one's kind of a, a an odd look to it. Now, I know that 12 goes into 36, but I also know that it does not go into 62. So I'm going to think what goes into 12. Well, 6 goes into it, but doesn't go into 62. 4 goes into 12, but it doesn't go into 62, but 2 does. So I'm going to pull 2 out. That's as far down. Just do factors in your head of what goes into 12 to make sure you can pull something out. Obviously, they're all even numbers, so 2 is going to go in. This becomes 6r squared minus 31r, because remember, I divided by 2, and this becomes 18. Now, this 2, I'm going to leave it over here for a while and bring it right down to the bottom. That way, in case I forget, I can at least like try to get my teacher or whoever to like pretend like, oh, see, it was there, but, you know, even though I forgot about it. Now, I'm at the, uh, I pulled out a common factor. These don't have any more. I'm going to slide, circle that 6, slide it over. It becomes r squared minus 31r, and 18 times 6 is 108. I get myself in these messes with gigantic numbers. Now, I'm ready to factor, so I'm going to look at signs. The second sign is the one I look at first. It says plus. The first sign says that it's minus, so the plus meant that they were the same. The minus meant they're both minus. So this is going to be r minus and r minus. What's very tempting to do is put different signs because these are different. The fact that they're different is almost completely irrelevant. Follow the system. If the second sign is plus, it's going to be the same. This one just tells you what it is. If this is minus, you can it's plus minus, it doesn't matter the order. Now, these are the same, which means I'm looking for factors of 108 that add up to 31 because they're the same, so you add them. So I'm going to make a 108 factor list, but I'm also going to be thinking in my head does it add up to 31? Because if it does, I'm finished. 1 and 108 after fixing the worst 8 ever. Just so you know, I don't pre-prep any of this stuff out, so I am using calculator. It's not like I'm above it. It's not like people who work with math all the time are constantly sitting there not using it for basic things. This is promising, isn't it? Because 108 divided by 4 gives me 27. So let's just add 27 and 4. Ah, oh, 31. That's what we're looking for. And since the signs are the same, it doesn't matter where you put them. 
Now I've got to make sure, now that I've done slide, I did the factor part, now I've just got to do the divide part. So I divide it by 6, and I need to make sure that I reduce those fractions down. This is 2 thirds. This, although looking very strange, will actually come out to reduce to, I believe, 9 over 2. Because 9 goes into 27 three times. Now, once again, failure on my part to put one in there that works out to a whole number. Like if this was just 2, say it had been 4 divided, or 8 divided by 6, or 12 divided by 6, and it gave me 2, you could stop. But in this case, it doesn't work out, so we have to re uh, slide it back again. 3r minus 2. Do this, 2r minus 9. And don't forget to bring your 2 back over in front, and that's your answer. It's not really difficult, it is kind of long, sorry about that. Um, so hopefully this is helpful, and uh, there's a calculator method to do some of this. If you have multiple choice, just saying, look around.